What? And broke down misery. To be fair, a lot of my songs are about roads. I'm out here tonight. And I'm looking for my baby. You see, she left me standing right there neath that old front porch. To be fair, I've always hated that line, too. I, I wrote it, but right here to the... What? I can't go another mile. Budget, live, not so live, and I got a lot of requests for, hey, play a new intro song, so there you go. That's another one of my songs, and uh, yeah, I get to play it and not have to pay anybody royalties other than myself, and YouTube doesn't shut it down, <laughs> so there you go. It's another old one, 64. I actually played that this week at uh, at the Express Boats dealer meeting. I hadn't played that one in a while. I was like, you know what? I'm going to play that on the show this week. I'm going to play that. It, it felt forced. To be honest, it felt forced. Biloxi Blues just just fits. It just fits right there. We also played that at the uh, Express Boats dealer meeting where we got to meet some low lifers and a lot of uh, a lot of Express Boats and Veranda Boats dealers out there trying to slang slang them uh, Express Yamahas all over the country. And uh, man, they had a good crowd. You get you hear a lot of talk about the economy right now, especially in the business I'm in. Uh, where where the corporations try to get every every penny out of everything they can, and you hear, oh man, the economy's slowing down. Man, it was it was good to see. It's a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of boat dealers from all around the country there. So really cool event. I got to see my buddy Uncle Doug Miller from down at Gros Savon, still the greatest place on earth, adult Disneyland. Got to uh, have dinner with my old buddy Justin Martin and his lovely bride down there. But then the coolest thing that happened. This is just like the humble brag section of the podcast for all you low lifers out there. Is uh Bo freaking Jackson, dude. Bo freaking Jackson was there, sitting there, just just sitting there with me, like we were old pals. And um, yeah, he's an interesting guy. He is uh he's a monstrous human being, as you would uh, probably guess. But uh interesting cat, man, and and fun fact about Bo Jackson. You never, you never know this. And uh, as he, he he sat with us at dinner, and then he spoke to the express boat dealer crowd, and everybody was there. And he uh, he has chronic hiccups, which I didn't know was a thing in life, right? Like I had no idea that was a first for me to experience that. But but he's you know he does public speaking engagements a lot, and what a deal to have to to have to go through. When you're trying to uh, just tell your life story and and motivate and inspire and and dude it it is uh it is something he opens with to, to explain to you but he uh, he kind of rallies through it but it is uh, it is a wild thing that I did not know was reality but he very much has it so uh, you know you can't have everything in life right sometimes you'd be the greatest athlete of all time potentially but then you get slapped with some chronic hiccups but what a damn deal. Um, but Bo freaking Jackson, dude, Bo knows boats, says he owns not one, but two expresses and he likes to, uh, likes to bass fish and catfish. That's his, that's his move and deer hunt, but uh, nice guy. Uh, grateful to, uh, you know, get to spend some time with my express boats family as always. They are indeed that y'all know I say it every week on ad reads, but they are, uh, so proud to be a part of that group. And like I said, they, they let me play music. They asked me to play music for all their dealers there. Uh, on the second evening after dinner and uh such a cool receptive bunch of folks that that listened and and seemed to seemed to enjoy what i was doing up there and, and that's always when you've been doing playing music as long as i have it's it's you never know with events like that corporate events especially and, and it was very uh very cool to be a part of it so uh thanks to the express boats crew moving on let's thank these sponsors and we gotta jump in we gotta jump in so startron starbright 
and star bright season that's a thing get yourself looking right with all the star bright cleaning products but star try kicking ethanol in the teeth there's 10 percent ethanol at all these freaking gas pumps you don't want it in your tank especially in your outboard engine it's going to screw up the work so a little dab will do you put you some star tron in there enzyme powered fuel treatment little blue bottle get it get it keep it in a truck weed eater chainsaw but that outboard engine, mm -mm, they do not like ethanol. Star Trek kicking ethanol in the teeth for many, many years now. Excuse me, I got a burp. All right. It's just, you know, it's just one of those, one of those things, guys and gals out there, low lifers. Pro Guide Batteries, ProGuideBatteries.com for all your lithium and AGM battery needs. Got in that lithium game a couple years ago. I've been running them in both of my expresses. The trolling motor batteries are fire. The new lithium cranking batteries are fire. Not necessarily fire. That might not be the best way to promote a battery. They're fire. <laughs> there have been some lithium batteries that have caught fire. Pro guides aren't one of those. Okay, let's let's get that out there. All right. You can use code LBL10 at checkout to let them know you are a low lifer, but they've got every battery accessory you need on there. ProGuideBatteries.com. All right, baitworks.com, bait-works, bait, B-A-I-T-W-R-X, W-R-X, bait-works. Get some questions about that every now and then. Bait-works.com, Duncan-10, D-U-N-K-I-N, like the donuts, Duncan-10. Going to save you money there. You got the L-O-B jigs on there. Look right here. Just look at this little tasty morsel. I'd eat it. I mean... That's probably not saying a lot because these days I'm in that dad bod mode and I'd eat anything, you know? I Nothing gets away around here right now. You give me a little Tito's, you give me a little vodka at night. I mean, Tito's, you give me some Oreos. You never know. Dude, I'll eat the whole pantry. But I would eat an L.O.B. jig if I was a bass. That's all I'm saying. Custom trocar hook. Power finesse jig, finer than frog hair skirt. Only available exclusively with baitworks.com. Com. It's got LBL right there on the package. Go check them out. Of course, they got everything else under the sun you could ever want. If you're going smallmouth fishing up north, you're taking you a little trip to break the heat down here, I promise you they got all the flatworm max scent stuff you could ever handle. They got trocar drop shot hooks, everything. Rods, reels, you name it. Duncan-10 saves you some cash and lets you know, lets them know you're a low lifer. I appreciate y'all. Get some LOB jigs. Go get them. I'm ready to get back on the water and slaying one myself. And last but not least, Express Boats. I am running that Express X21 Pro LE. Hang the freaking banner, though, man. Look at that. Just right there behind me. <laughs> Express Boats, Hot Springs, Arkansas, man, where I got to go this week. I've been there so many times for so many different events, but they had the whole convention center rented out. All their boats on display. Dude, they're pontoon boats, buddy. Rocket ships. It's the coolest. They they have a pontoon with twins on it, dude. Twin Yamahas. Come on. Let's like, hey guys at Express, put your boy in one of those. I'm all about this bass boat life, but if you mean I can cruise around listening to tunes in a veranda pontoon, whoo -hoo. unbelievable. Uh, but they had an incredible layout. All the boats look great. So many cool dude. They got a flats boat. That's like a little skiff. That's one of the coolest boats. It's got a polling platform. I want one so bad. I don't know what for, but it's really cool. Tunnel holes. Check them out. Expressboats.com. Trust me. Sea deck bow to stern. Yamaha's on every one of them. They are absolutely killing it in life. And uh, great, great people that I'm honored to be a part of their family. Express Boats building excitement since 1966. All right. Yeah, I had a lot of uh had a lot of weird um weird feelings. Weird weird feelings in that uh in that convention center in that arena. Uh lot, you know, I turned 40 this year and life hits you weird, you know? I, it does for me. I'm going to I'm a I'm a passionate person. I'm an emotional person. I like I, I think that I'm a firm believer obviously. I think by the life I live that um Memories are important. I think doing things that, you know, experiencing different things in life is very important. Uh, not to be all philosophical, but I, I I was standing there 
Sunday afternoon in that express uh, boats booth in that convention center though. And it was as, as I'm sitting there thinking it's right in the same place. I fished a forest wood cup there in 2015, the last one that co-anglers were ever allowed at. And I qualified for it my first year there on the FLW tour as a co-angler. The FLW tour doesn't exist anymore. The forest wood cup doesn't exist anymore. And, uh, it was just kind of, and, and my buddy Joey C, uh, was crushing on the elite that day. And he's a former co-angler and, and, Shane LeHue had had a good week up there at St. Clair, and I actually drew out with Shane in that tournament. And it was just kind of like I just uh, – my buddy Brad Knight won the Forest Wood Cup in that building in that same tournament. He won a half million dollars and, and changed everything for him right there in one minute. And I walked out into that empty arena and just kind of uh, took that in. I sent BK a picture, and I'm like, dude, do you realize how much has changed? And I think that's – that's what got me the most was like, dude, it, and I got to digging through. If you follow me on social, I post like some old videos this week, an old video that, that uh, a lot of people enjoyed back in 2016, me and my buddy, big C, the netting, the infamous netting video. And somebody brought it up at ICAST and got me thinking about it again. But, uh, but I, I, it's crazy to think that in <laughs> really in the way, in the ways of the, of time that's not that long ago so you take it back to 15 you know eight years ago and to think that was one of the biggest tournaments in bass fishing it's gone now that tour is gone now yeah i know it's the invitationals and whatever but it's gone okay like what it was is gone uh and i had so many guys reach out when i post that it's like oh my god did we we had so much fun in that era of of bass fishing i mean it was just there was no drama necessarily and and there was no, there was just, it was just, we did what we did. The elite guys did what they did. We were all friends and, and it was, uh, it was a really good time. You had the classic and you had the cup, uh, but it just got me thinking, man. And then, and then as the week drug on, it's like, uh, it's amazing to me to think about like the Bass Pro Tour and where it's at in four years and all the crazy crap that's happened over there. You know, and all the crap that's happened with me and them and and just for being outspoken and different things. and but but this week I was watching live and and uh, and it and it insulted me on on a lot of levels and and I took it a little personal. Uh, but when you hear Marty Stone be like, well, we're the first ones in the water up here's major event. We're gonna expose this place to the world, water. We're up here exposing this water to the world. Hey, bud. Well, um, we did a live broadcast from there two weeks ago. We also did one there last year, and a lot of people watched it. And, like, I just don't understand that, like, being that tone deaf or arrogant. And I think with his case, it's certainly more arrogance. But, but it's just, like, don't say – like you're showcasing this for the first time. Like, dude, there were before MPFL ever went up there, there were Bassmaster College events. Like, there have been big events on Saginaw Bay before Marty Stone buffed his head and got on live and decided to to act like they invented bass fishing. You know, it's it's bizarre to me. But then you got that this week, it just makes me laugh. And then you go like, I wouldn't care if Spencer Sheffield caught a thousand pounds i would have a hard time putting him on camera number one just for the for my brand alone of the of of what you're trying to do with all the controversy from caillou of course they've put all the cheaters on multiple times and that's fine but but with with spencer it's just so funny the clip they choose to post like whoever's running your social is either ignorant arrogant or just plain as dumb as spencer saying his body failed him on the polygraph, <laughs> bless his heart. Uh, but he boat flips a 5'11". It was a stud. Sagging all day. I have indeed covered two tournaments there and not seen a 5'11 largemouth. It was a big one. He boat flips it. It skips across the carpet. Of course, they have a rule about, you know, boat flipping and whatever. Fish can't touch the deck. And the and the, <laughs> the poor official goes, slight touch. It was a slight touch. Damn, buddy, if that's a slight touch, I need – I need some more slight touch in my life. You know what I'm saying? You feel me on that? I need some more slight touch if that's a slight touch. <laughs> but I did, I wasn't, I didn't watch live like, you know, after hearing Marty blabber incessantly like he tends to do. Uh, and, and I didn't watch, but I saw the clip 
and I was getting tagged in it and stuff. And uh, but I did hear that Spencer gave himself a penalty <laughs> because the the official was like, "That was a slight touch." <laughs> like, what are we doing at this point? I think that it's dumb that the fish can't hit anything just because whatever fish for a hundred grand, you're gonna get it in the boat regardless. But I just think in that instance, I'm like, dude, do y'all understand what irony is? <laughs> But like to not only like have him on camera, but then because whatever he said, he he paid the price, right? He did the penalty and all that. But like, dude, he blatantly cheated <laughs> and then failed the poly. So like, dude, I don't feel sorry for you. You're trying to get everybody to feel sorry for you. And there are some rubes out there that are like, he's a good boy. He didn't mean to harm, right? Then his body failed him. Eh, okay. But uh, yeah, and Santa's real. So <laughs> it's just bizarre, man. It's bizarre. But but to put him on camera and then show that, but not but not say anything about the penalty or that he did end up serving a penalty and just like throw it out there to the masses where people like myself just sitting there waiting, like, dude, do yourself a favor and just be better. <laughs> just be smarter than that, dude. Just be smarter than that. Like, but that is that, it's like that tunnel vision thing. I think because they have, they do have so many good things going on and they do have a lot of smart, smart people. I feel like within that organization and I just don't understand how they just keep making ridiculous mistakes, ridiculous mistakes, just own it and move on. I, I don't know. I don't get it. But that one made me laugh. Like it's a slight touch. Bring me some slight touching son. I am. Hey, let's, let's see. It's a slight touching. Whoa. <laughs> Get me tore up. Get me in my feels. Also, slight touch. Uh, but not all of it's crazy and tone deaf. You've got uh, – I'm actually recording this on Saturday because I'm going to uh, get to go to the Nashville Grand Prix, the freaking IndyCar race in downtown Nashville on Sunday, which is when I typically record. So I'm recording a, a little bit early, just like I did last week. So their event is not over. This is actually the knockout round, but, but uh, Kevin Van Dam. I mean, and you can't say enough about Kevin, and social media has been littered with Kevin posts this week, as it should be. But Kevin, right now as it sits, as I sit here in the bar and grill, is uh, is leading that event going into the championship round. Too cool. Man, if he closes this thing out with a win, that would just be unbelievable. Unbelievable. Uh, what a What a career he's had, and to close it out like that would be – Really, something special if he can if he can win and and I know he's got experience up there at Saginaw Bay and and uh, just be really cool him winning his home state of Michigan be it would be pretty special. So something to uh, definitely uh, look forward to to watching that final round with him and and see what he does there in his last you know potentially last bass tournament. Let's throw that out there. Kevin is the most competitive cat on planet Earth, and I just. I don't see him being done. I've talked about that into oblivion on this show, but damn it, man, I just don't see him being done. But we shall see. Um, I got talked to with him a little bit there at ICAST, and and uh, we'll see. We'll see. He's uh, he's certainly a legend, though, and he's, he's a hero of mine. I'm lucky enough to uh, have worked with him a lot over the years, which blows my mind that I ever got a position in life to be around one of my childhood heroes. But uh, Kevin – Van Dam, man, thank you for all you've done in the sport, for being the ambassador and being the the consummate professional that you have certainly been. I need to get Kevin on here. Um, I need to uh, I need to give him a shout. And get him. We need to do it. We need to do a low budget live with Kevin Van Dam. That would be a good time, really good time. We'll let this tournament kind of kind of settle out, and we will uh, we will see. What happened? So St. Clair Elite last week when I was uh, was doing podcast, just like this week, a little early, so I, I missed the uh, the finish there and uh, reporting on it anyways. And, and so many of y'all were watching that, but you don't need me to tell you what's going on. But my old buddy Joey C. Joey Swintez freaking wins Blue Trophy number two. Number two, he leads rookie of the year, sixth in the angler of the year. I mean, I I was all but but uh, tearing up when he won. I mean, because me and this cat go back, and uh, and I consider him a friend. 
He's a very solid individual and uh, too cool to see. But but you've got a you got an interesting to me. They got two weeks left of this uh, of the you know tournament year and and dude, you you look right now, and I mean from first to eighth place in the Angler of the Year, Patrick Walters. I, I got it pulled up right here, right now. Um, you know, it's like fifty eight points. That's it from Brandon Cobb to Patrick Walters. Now, granted, in a hundred hundred boat field, it's tough to make up that kind of ground. That's but dude, anything can happen. And and then you go to the to all the way down, you know, to tenth place, Drew Benton is is only uh he's sixty two points off off of first there. So uh Tyler Brandon Cobb, Kyle Welcher, Tyler Rivette, John Cox, Drew Cook, Joey C, Jay Shakurit, who won St. St. Lawrence River last year uh, in the mix for two more smally events. I mean, dude, this thing is going to get going to get wild. Of course, Cobby and Welch are only separated by one freaking point headed into Champlain. So uh, that race is certainly one to watch. Uh, so we are going to get. Let's see where he's where he's at right now in the world. I know this guy. We'll probably be on every single, you know, when when guys win events, and rightfully so, they're low-hanging fruit. And they're going to be on every podcast. And I normally get messages like, oh, did you see they were on blah, blah, blah. And and here's here's the deal. This guy's a real one. And as I just said, he is a friend. He is someone that uh, I respect immensely. I have uh, I've had my share of ups and downs with him being on the road with him at tournaments and us, uh, you know, kind of going through the trenches together there on the FLW tour as co anglers and then as pros for a, for a few years there. Um, I remember when he broke out the cowboy hat for the first time. I was there the tournament that it that it made its debut. He was actually pulled up next to me at Lake Okeechobee and putting it on, and I was giving him a very hard time about it because all of a sudden he was just Cowboy Joe, and uh, and he was a real deal cowboy. But all of a sudden he was like, you know what? I'm going to start being myself more. And he and I have had a, a lot of conversations over the years about life and whatnot. But I know he is going to do every show in the business. But I only care about one show and that's low budget live. And so I care to talk to the people I want to talk to. And here we go. We're going to get the cowboy on right now. Two time, two time blue trophy winner right here. He's got like more obligations than anybody I've ever seen right now. Joey. Hey, let's... this is Joey C. Fuentes. Sorry. I what? The call. I'll get back what? to you as soon as possible. Thank what? You. He sent me to, he sent me to voicemail. He was actually trying to call me at the same time I was calling him. That was actually funny. She left him an ugly message. Hello. Buddy, I I thought you, your voicemail, first of all, welcome to Low Budget Live, Joey Sowentes. But <laughs> but your voicemail is, is one of those little trickster ones where you think your buddy answered the phone, but he didn't. <laughs> Oh really? And I, we, I and, didn't know that. And we just did that. that. And we just did that on Low Budget Live. And then I said, "Wait a second, Joey C has called us back, ladies and gentlemen." Yeah, I'm sorry, Luke. I and and we're we just got done going at Walmart, and I got kids screaming in the car. Dude, listen, I want nothing more than this in life. You know that. I know. Do, do you have your lovely bride with you? Do I hear her trying to to, to wrangle your children? Yeah. Yeah, she's trying to put a movie on right now. What what Are movie you, are we what movie are we watching? What movie are we watching, Joe? Spirit. It's the horse movie. Okay. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Tell Gwen Spirit. to sing him a song. Your wife is a songbird. Yeah. Uh, Luke wants you to sing and start singing a song. Sing, sing a, song a song to the children and to us on Low Budget Live. Sing Biloxi Blues. Do it. Sing Biloxi Blues. <laughs> She'll say, I don't know that trashy song. <laughs> <laughs> dude so anyways buddy uh I, I said before this i know you're gonna do the gamut of interviews i've been watching your social media this week and the coolest thing for me is to see you getting your due with all of your sponsors and dude you're out there everybody is so freaking proud to be a part of team joey c cowboy joe and i love it dude i love seeing it <laughs> Yeah, it's it's really cool, man. I, I do have like the, the, the people supporting me out there. Just uh, it, it's 
they love it. They love me. They love my success. They've seen me, you know, from where I started to where I am now. And um, it, it's really cool. You know, they just, just support the crap out of me. And uh, I'm super thankful for that. Well, dude, so I uh, I said you're going to do every podcast under the sun, but I don't care. I only care about one podcast. That's the one I do. And, and, and you're my buddy. And I said, I'm going to talk to some Joey C this week. And – you know, dude, when I text you, and I didn't tell you where I was at when I text you, congratulations, and and uh, and as crazy as this is, this so on Sunday when you won, and I and I opened the show talking a little bit about this. I've been sentimental all week. I'm in my feels. I don't know what's going on with me, but uh, <laughs> but but uh, I think it's it's that I turned forty and I'm an old fart now, Joe. But uh, but no, I was so I was in Hot Springs, Arkansas on Sunday and I was in the the convention center and arena area there for an express boats dealer meeting when you won and and I was just like dude I, I had chills and I'm smiling ear to ear because I'm thinking eight years ago 2015 you and I are just punk co-anglers and fish weighing in in that building <laughs> For the last yeah, ever yeah. Forcewood Cup that co-anglers. And, dude, that's not that long ago. And to know that now, in 2023, you have won two of the hardest trophies to win in professional bass fishing. You have changed. You know, you you fought through and qualified for the Elite Series. You earned your spot there after years on the FLW world and going going through all the, all the ups and downs we saw there. And now you're a two-time freaking Bassmaster Elite Series champion, buddy. Like that's like that just makes me just warm and fuzzy inside. I'm just gonna be honest with you. Yeah, it it, it does me too. I mean, it, it's it's a lot of hard work put in, and, and um, you know, I said it on a post this week, and I put something up. Um, you know, I I've been really fortunate, Luke, to have Larry and and um, him mentoring me, and like I got. I got a head start, you know, really, honestly, with with him and, and teaching me everything and, you know, fishing wise and the fishing industry and, and all the, the techniques and stuff. So so I owe a lot of credit to, to Larry and that, that kind of I felt like that really boosted my success. And, um, you know, I've got a little bit of a knack for the fishing thing. So uh, but no, it's it's great, man. I, I, I enjoyed those times, too, you know, the hot springs and, and fishing those tournaments and the co-angling like that's that's what it's all about man i mean going from the bottom to the top and and uh it's just cool, it's cool. Dude, i can remember me you and brian new sitting on a tailgate of a truck after an event and and to think about you two just ripping it up now at the top level is uh is really really awesome to see man and and uh and you guys were obviously a lot better fishermen than i ever was um but but you guys are killing it and it's it's cool to see there's a lot of folks from that from that time frame that are doing well but um but it's crazy to see how much things have changed but uh going back to larry what did larry say after this second one because I know we talked after your first one, but what did he say after this one? Is he just shaking his hand like, oh, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's kind of funny. Um, I was telling Mercer this the other day. Um, Who? So, Mer Dave Mercer. Oh, yeah. Not familiar um, with her. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, Larry Larry was going to stay, and he's like, Joey, I'm gonna I, want, I really want to stay because – I, I really feel like you're going to win this tournament. That's cool. And he said, but and he said a long a while back ago when I was rooming with uh, George Cochran, he had a chance to, he was going in like me last day, had a chance to win the tournament and he stayed to watch his buddy try and win. And he ended up losing. <laughs> he felt like he, <laughs> he felt like he jinxed him. So, um, so Larry's like, Joey, I'm just going to go home. I said, that's fine, Larry. Do you think that's good? I, I don't want you to jinx me either. Just, <laughs> yeah, please go home, head, Mr. Nixon. Yeah, just head, yeah, head on out of here. And, uh, no, he was, when I got, you know, after the tournament, he called me and everything. And he's, he, you know, he's proud of me. I mean, Larry's been like a second dad to me. And um, it, it, we're really good friends. And it, it, he's just, he's just super happy for me. He's like, man, you, you've, uh, you've done it. You made it like. Like he finally said that to me. You know, he's been telling me these past few years, like Joe, you gotta win, man. You gotta win. You gotta win. And 
I've been knocking on the door. And you're like, it. Larry, I'm trying. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez, yeah, get off I'm my trying. back, dude. Not everybody's the general. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, uh, but, but it's good to have somebody there pushing you like no that. No doubt, like, dude. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yes. hey, you used to do this. You got to win. And so nothing like pressure or anything on me, but, but, uh, it, it's just cool, man. He's, he's super proud of me and uh, I love Larry Nixon. No, no pressure at all from Larry Nixon being like, Joey, because I can hear him. Like, you got to win. Nobody cares about this not winning crap, okay? That's right. Yeah, that's exactly what he would say. <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. He's like, all this ticky tock Facebook cowboy hat stuff, Joey. Nobody cares. You got you to gotta win. Because I that's can remember right. you that's and right. I having uh, – it's so so cool to see too, man. Like thinking back on some of your your you and I have had some candid conversations just about life and trying to separate from the pack a little bit, you know, and uh, and just be yourself. And I think that was always something that that you and I talked about. And you're like, dude, how do I how do I get sponsors and how do I you know how do what do I need to do? Because you had all the talent in the world. And you're like, what should I do? And I'm like, dude, just be you. Just freaking be yourself. Like you're a great dude to be around. Got a big old personality. Like just be you, and you embrace that, man. And uh, and and I was saying right before I called you, the the funniest thing that I remember at Okeechobee the year you broke out the cowboy hat. Like I remember it, and it, the wind was yeah. blowing so hard. And I've said this on the show before, so forgive me. But uh, if you you've heard the other interviews we've done with Joey, but but I was like, uh, I was like, so you wear a cowboy hat now, dude? Like I have so many questions. Like how do you keep it on your head when the wind's blowing? Like where do you put it when you're running down the lake? Why do you have it? What are you, what are you doing, Joey? I'll never forget. I'm like this seems like. A very hard thing to keep up with during the day when you're trying to catch five bass. It, 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 yeah, it is, man. It's, it's kind of a, it's kind of a pain. But I've got it. I've got a system now, and my hats don't last but maybe two or three tournaments. Really? No kidding. Yeah, they, they get. I mean, they got rained on. St. Clair. It's been in the water probably, you know, maybe four times this year, and I had to retire it after this tournament. I went down to. Uh, uh, some store in Little Rock, and I got me a new hat. So uh, you don't have like hat. a you don't you haven't worked this into like some cool hat sponsorship? Because shame on you, first of all, if you haven't. Okay, because there are a lot uh, of cool cowboy yeah. hat companies out there. You you are lacking there, son. If well, you if you're still well, buying me, hats you, off the shelf, I'm I feel uh, you're not doing your job. I uh, listen. I have been working. <laughs> you don't you don't know how hard I've been working on trying to get that done. Uh, <laughs> and and I'm hoping that now with you know i got two wins that that maybe something will happen and i and i've had a few uh cool things happen in the last couple of days people reaching out to me that's so awesome i think it i think it's gonna happen man there's no doubt um don't know when but, uh, but yeah i just have to buy my old cowboy hats until it comes do you have but, but do you because i'm not a I, i've told you i've worn a cowboy hat a couple of times i think i look delightful in one you know i think i think i pull it off my wife does not think so uh, and but, but what she thinks doesn't doesn't it doesn't matter to me at all to be honest uh, on my headwear. But do you have like a go to like brand or do you like you said I just went to some shop in Little Rock like you don't have like a thing like that's like your hat because dude I'm I'm funny with every hat I wear like I know the kind of style I like just in regular hats like you don't have like a go to. No, I really, I really okay. no, I, so I'm kind of, I'm kind of cheap Luke. Like I'll go into a store <laughs> and I'll get like the, 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 I'll get the knockoff, like uh, whatever, um, whatever brand in house that the store makes, that really? looks, you know, pretty good and sturdy. Like boot and, barn. Like, yeah. You're, you're rolling up to boot barn or whatever in the heck it is. Yeah. And just get the yeah, boot barn yeah. brand. Cavenders. Hat? Dang. Yeah. Cavenders. Yeah. 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 yeah Cavenders. Like they, they make some. They make some good hats. And listen, I I wear my hat like I wear my hat working on the farm. Yeah, so yeah. It, oh, yeah. it gets nasty and sweaty. Like I just don't see myself spending two or three or four hundred dollars or something on a hat that I'm going to just straight abuse. And then maybe that's just the cheap well, side. Of here's the know. thing, though, dog. You've won 200K this year. Maybe maybe step out and get you a two hundred dollar hat. I don't know. Make treat yourself. Joey C. Well, <laughs> treat yourself, Cowboy Joe. Get one with a little feather in it or something cool like that. Come on. Yeah, yeah. I like Ryan Bingham, dude. That. Get one of those Bingham hats. You could pull it off. Uh -oh, I man. can't. Bingham's got like, but I think his is like, I don't know, some felt or suede or something, whatnot. It, it's probably real fancy. You probably don't want it out there on the uh, on the front deck of the Phoenix. 
Yeah, I need to. So that's what I'm going to splurge on is like a really nice felt hat, especially for the classic. I've, I've had several of them and yeah. uh, they're they're kind of starting to get a little older and wore out and um, they've been abused also. And so I'm going to I'm going to get me a nice felt for the classic to, to wear to some of these nice events. So. But to be clear, this hat from St. Clair was not the same hat from Seminole. Yes, it was. It was the same. Was. Okay, yeah, you need to yeah. retire that. That one needs to go yeah. hanging on them trophies. Yeah, yeah. You, I've had a lot of people say though that I don't need to get rid of it. It's my lucky hat, but you don't. I was going to say I, I don't know. I, got, I might wear it to Champlain and St. Lawrence. Yeah, yeah. Did you Did you see my video I uh, made with the kids dancing like with the with the they had hats on and they were dancing in front of the trophies? Yeah. Okay. Well. Right after that, like they were so pumped up and fired up, I my my daughter had my hat on and it got on the floor and my little two year old she got on top of it and just started jumping up and down on top of the hat. Uh, so, so, it's my hat uh, now, Daddy. This is my hat. Yes, yeah, she's she's done, man. She's done. <laughs> she is out of the wheel. <laughs> Just that Crazy. dude. That's that's the most beautiful thing about kids, right there, is they don't care that dad just won two elite series trophies, and that that yeah. hat means anything to him. That hat means nothing to her. She does not care. She does not <laughs> care. Right. Like twenty years from now, she'll be like, "Oh my gosh, I can't believe I smashed dad's hat." Right now, she's like, "This is dad. He's just dad. It's just dad. He smells like fish and cows. This is dad. <laughs> like, that's all they care. My boys are just like, oh, cool." You got to go to the express dealer meeting and Bo Jackson was there. Big deal, dad. Cool. Like they oh. don't, they literally don't care. It doesn't get any better, Joey. It doesn't. They're like, Dude. oh, you, you're going to go do your podcast, dad? Like they make fun of me. <laughs> like, what are you, you going to do some social media today, dad? And I'm like, gosh, I'm 40. I should I might, quit all this. I might, I might pee down the side of my leg if I got to meet Bo Jackson. That was, that's really cool. Dude, man. he was, uh, yeah, I talked about it at the, at the first of the show. It, he was, uh, He's kind of a quiet dude, very nice. Uh, I got to sit at his table at dinner, and he was uh, he was very kind to answer a lot of questions and whatnot that I had and that everybody at the table had, and uh, very interesting dude. Doesn't like football anymore, which is kind of – and he didn't dive into that, but he's not a big football fan. Like hmm. from – and I don't know if it's from a physical thing, you know, uh, but like oh, there were kids in the audience, and he was like, play baseball. <laughs> It was it was yeah. interesting. Play baseball. Don't play that, football. I think that's kind of – it's interesting you say that because I played baseball like my entire yeah, – right. pretty much my entire life. And, and I wasn't a professional baseball player, but I did it all the way through college. Mm -hmm. And and I just don't – I was in the game so long that I really don't have a big, like, you know, team I like. And I don't – I watch some baseball, but I just – I'm not into it, you know, at all. I don't really care to watch it. I would rather watch, you know, football. So – um, that's, I think that's probably what it is for him, you know? Oh, I'm, I'm sure. But. And dude, it's, it's interesting. It's like, I think it's whatever you're in the middle of, like, this is no offense to anybody else that does what, what I do in the, in the fishing industry, uh, with podcasting, but like, I don't watch uh, people be like, do you see what happened on blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, cause I don't watch it just because I do my own thing and I know what I put into it and have to put into it. And I don't want to yeah. hear necessarily like what was talked about on other shows. Cause I, I want to just do my own thing. Clean slate. Right. Like if I talk about it on here, I don't want anybody to be able to say, well, so-and-so said that or did this or whatnot. You know what I mean? Like I just, and so I get that from that standpoint. Um, I think it's whatever you're cl really close to. Maybe you kind of, after you, I don't know if you get jaded. Cause, cause uh, my buddy Cody, who you met there whis with whiskey Myers at the classic, yeah. like he's that way about music at times and it's interesting because i was with them in milwaukee a couple weekends ago and doing the crowds just like ah, going nuts and you're right backstage and they're fixing to go out and i'm like dude i could run through a brick wall right now and he's like huh, yeah man and you're like you're not like <laughs> you're not feeling that and he goes dude i've been doing this for 18 years and i'm like well you're spoiled but i get that because people would say yeah. that to you about being around larry larry's just larry right like he's your bro, yeah. he's your guy. But most people would lose their mind, fishing fans, especially to be around Larry. And I'm the same way with the folks in my life that that were my heroes that I'm close to. Like you do get a little, like you just get used to it, I guess. Um, 
and and so we take that kind of thing for granted i think at times but but it's certainly whatever you're closest to i think that you can uh I don't know grow, if it's grow tired of it or, or you're too close to it to even watch. He says his wife is obsessed with going to Auburn football games. And he's actually building a house in Auburn. He lives in Illinois. And he said, I'm building her a house so I can go play golf when she goes to those stupid ball games. <laughs> like, he don't want to go. <laughs> like, Heisman Trophy, wow. bizarre, you know, because you think he'd be like, War Eagle. He don't care. He's like, I don't even know how many games they win. I don't care. That's interesting. It's interesting, man. It was very interesting. But, uh, well, dude. You mentioned the classic, and you know I'm a selfish person. Everybody that knows me knows that, and I'm a little disappointed that you're going to just be a shoe in for the classic. Now, look, I pull for you. I am, uh, I I am the biggest Joey C fan. We're bros, but you're going to miss our gig there, and uh. <laughs> I, I have a personal problem with that because we kind of formed this band this year, and you know you're just already quitting. And I think the success I, from these uh, Bassmaster events has gone to your head, Joey C. What do you have to say about that for the low lifers? They're, you're going to miss low budget live, 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 live in Tulsa. What do you have to say about so, that? So when we, when we did our little gig, um, and I'm serious, man, like I had the most fun that night. I banged on the, the cajon. Um, I'm not very good at guitars and playing in front of people, but like still, like just probably one of the coolest moments of my life. I got to play with Shannon Wheeler. I mean, a great great player and and you obviously and and i was i've been thinking about that like you know if i make this classic like i'm probably not gonna be able to get to play with these dudes and and that was to me would be like i mean it would be i I really want to fish in the classic but i would have just as much fun doing that with you guys and i don't know man but i may have to try and make it work maybe just come in for a few minutes even though i'm fishing the tournament like i can't see myself not doing that but i don't know where i'm going to be staying at or anything well see fish, that's but... the trick with tulsa because it's like so freaking far to the lake i'm yeah. really pissed at bass honestly i don't know why they couldn't just do it somewhere easier where you could gig and fish you know i don't i don't understand <laughs> yeah. you know, like you know you're quitting the band because rumor has it there are going to be some other special guests at this one. <laughs> so there are going to be some very special guest pickers involved in Tulsa next year. Trust me on that. And uh, trust me on that. Some, some Oklahoma boys. So it's going well, to be, I'm gonna, <laughs> it's going to be fun. I'm going to get, um, I can assure you of this 100%. My entire family um, and mostly my wife's family um, they're going to be there to your your playing okay. thing. And Gwen, I'm going to make sure that she's there. So if you want to get her Gwen up there. Gwen better be there. Gwen's a, she's a member, dude. She's a member of the band. She's yeah, in forever. Yeah. She's great. Um, so I I may just be there in spirit. but um, Yeah, <laughs> well, know, I hope you're well, leading no. the Bassmaster Classic and you're like, yeah, I'm glad I missed LBO Live for this. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> but, it, but it's so funny. I, I was looking at the standings and, dude, you are six right now. Of course, you're leading rookie of the year, um, sixth in the angler of the year race, dude. Fifty-seven points out, two weeks left. I mean, that's not a big gap in my opinion. I mean, first to tenth is like sixty-two points. I mean, it's tight. Oh. It's as tight as it as it gets. Are you thinking about that at all? Are you thinking about rookie of the year? Um, I mean, obviously you're thinking about two trophies and how freaking awesome that is. But I mean, are you thinking like, dude, Hey, I, I got a chance here. I mean, you're, you're just a few points off of the top five in the freaking Bassmaster elite series angler of the year race. Let that sink in. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool. I'm, you know, I mean, it's there. Like I, I, I know, you know, I'm in six. I mean, I hear goodness. Everybody's been telling me, but like, yeah. um, my, my goal, like, for these last couple of tournaments, Luke is just to try and win another one. Like I want to, yes, let's go. I, I love, I love Champlain and I love the St. Lawrence river. Yes, you do. I think, I, I think I have, I think I have a chance like just, and I'm not trying to be cocky, but I feel like you've had chances I've there done, before, right? I mean, you know, I've the had, deal. Yeah. I know. I, I feel confident. It, and so what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go try and win champlain i'm gonna go try and win st lawrence and if if i win those things great that's all bonus to me i 
that'll be awesome. But, but that's, it's, I'm not really trying to think about it. I just want to go do my job and, and try and, you know, try and win a couple tournaments and for sure, hopefully make the, make the dang top 50 cut. <laughs> no doubt really about the it. One goal every tournament, but yeah, get, get paid yeah. up and get back home to those babies, man. But that, uh, dude, if you yeah. win two more, I think in my opinion, you will have to hire maybe a security guard because I don't think they're going to take lightly to you coming over there and just being like, Hey, I'm cowboy Joe. Give me all the trophies. Sit down boys. Like, I think you're going to have to start wearing like a black cowboy hat and maybe grow like a, a mustache and dye it real black and start being like a villain. I think you're going to have to flip to heel like in the pro wrestling world. If you win four, because you're no longer going to be like the good guy. I think you're then the, like the bad boy cowboy of the elite series. I think. Yeah. And I th- more like Jesse I James, think son. I, I think you're right. I yeah. think there's going to probably, there's going to be some anglers um, <laughs> on the elite series that are going to be like wanting to kill me. Yeah. I mean, straight up. Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, yeah. they're not going to be happy. And I, I really don't want to be that guy, but. Oh, um, you want to you know, be I, that I, guy. I, no, buddy. Let me just <laughs> help you right here. You want to be that guy. Everybody wants to be that guy. I want to be the guy they all don't like because he won four trophies. <laughs> Come on, buddy. <laughs> Come on now. Um, it's incredible that we're even talking about that, dude. But but when you get on this role, and this is what I've asked a lot of folks that have won, but now with this, this two in the same season, like what do you feel like? Can you even put it into words? Like going to Champlain, you've got to be – the second the the boat rolls off the trailer, you got to think, well, yeah, I can win. You, you oh, get yeah. what I'm saying? Like yeah. that feeling's with you. Like that confidence is palpable. I'm sure, right? Yeah, it it, it is. Um, I don't like to talk about it, but I mean, I I and do. It's not cocky. I, do. I, I don't want to come across like that. No, it's a, it's a confidence, right? Like you can do it. Yeah, yeah. I and You've done it. And honest, honestly, going into like where I was at in my career going into this year from the first tournament, like I was a little nervous and didn't know what to expect at Okeechobee, but I had somewhat of that confidence. And then, you know, I win when at Seminole, um, you know, I had a, maybe I had that one bomb on Murray this year, but like I have that confidence, like going in this next tournament. Yeah, you're right. Like I feel like I can, I could win potentially without a doubt. I mean, I, and I don't know. I mean, Obviously, I feel that way because I've had success this right, year. Right, right. I mean, you know, there's yeah, there's not really a way to explain it. It's just, I mean, it's like I remember this experience when I played baseball. Um, and and you're just you're you're pitching in a tournament or a series, and you know, like give me the ball, man. I'm ready to go. You know, like yeah. I can I can dominate. You know, it's just that same it's that same feeling. And 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 listen, it's bass fishing, Luke. I could finish. That's right. That's that, yeah. That, that, I mean, they got know. they've got fins and brains. They can change their minds any any day of the week. But yeah. but when yeah. you kind of got a rhythm going, and I think you know it's 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 cool to me that you won on two polar opposite fisheries. You know, um, down there in the timber with largemouth and the drop shot deal forward facing sonar but but on a on a historic southern fishery and then to win on a historic smallmouth fishery like St. Clair two just crazy different bodies of water different conditions different everything uh but to have confidence I think on this northern swing because you know like I do it is where a lot of southern guys typically fall off it is I think for for myself us rednecks go up there and you get called up in, whee, this is fun. <laughs> and yeah, and yeah, you need to be like... <laughs> catching four plus. You know what I mean? And you get caught up in it, and the next thing you know, you're 80th with 18 pounds. Like St. Clair was just this freak show slugfest. And you're like, man, I had a pretty good day. And you come in, and you just get your teeth kicked in. So I think that it's uh, to have that momentum, you know, rolling into Champlain, rolling into St. Lawrence, man, I, I think it's going to be – I don't know. I think you're going to be in the mix for this Angler of the Year deal – coming down to the St. Lawrence. I mean, you, you had the chance to win that title event there on the FLW side of things, MLFLW. And, uh, you dang sure know it. Are you guys, are y'all going out of Waddington or Clayton? I can't remember. Uh, Clayton. Okay. So Lake and play and all that, like it's whole shoot match then. Yeah. It's, it's going to be, you know, every tournament I fish there, I've had to run from basically Messina or Waddington. So, 
Okay. Um, it's going to be, it's going to be nice. I don't have to drive my boat for an hour and 25 minutes to get to the, to get to where I like to fish. So, to get um, to the promise and line. then, yeah. And then, you know, you got the lake and, um, I think I know the river pretty good. So I'm going to focus that practice on, on the lake and cause it's more than likely that's where it's going to be done, but you never know with the weather and, and whatnot, but it's going to be, a, it's going to be, a, it's going to be awesome, man. Uh, lo- really looking forward to it. If the wind blows up there, Will you like attach a ratchet strap or bungee to your cowboy hat on live for me to keep it um, on your head? Like I'll, just something to give it a little more security, just and be like, this is this is for all the low lifers. <laughs> Will you do so? It's got to be really ratchet though. Like it can't be. I mean, we're the low lifers. Like it can't be something fancy, like some nice little thing you buy at a cowboy hat store. This has got to be something homemade, Joe. Oh yeah, I can I can manage that. I've like got cable some, ties. Some old- Right. No, I, I will. What I'll do is actually, I think I have some laying in the back of my truck. I'll get some baling twine. Like, the yes, now we're that we talking. Hay yes. And, um, I'll just, you know, I'll make sure I got a little bit of that in the boat. I'll just grab my <laughs> knife and cut a hole right there in either side of my, the brim of my yes. hat. And I'll put a little chin strap on it and we'll yeah. just roll with it. And you'll say, this is for all the low lifers. Thank you for the support. Yeah. You bunch of low lifers. And they'll be like, what is he talking about? And Mark yeah, Zona will go, yes, because he will definitely know what we're talking about. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> well, Joey, you are, uh, man, you're, you're the, uh, you're a real one. And I text you that the other night. I mean that you're a guy that, uh, it's not hard to pull for you. It never has been since the first time I ever met you. You're a kind, kind guy. You are as advertised all the time, no matter the environment, whether you're beating on a K on at a bar in Knoxville, Tennessee, or drop shot in small mouth or, or being super dad to those kiddos. Uh, you're the real deal, man. And I'm proud to know you and I appreciate you coming on dude very much. So I wish you the best of luck. Well, I appreciate it, Luke. And I, and I really appreciate you and your realness and all this stuff. I listen to you traveling up and down the road everywhere I go and everybody I talk to loves your show and, and you're keeping it real. And that's, that's what matters to me. So um, I appreciate you having me on. Man. Well, I appreciate you, buddy. And I, and a lot of people say that, but th- there's one thing I know about Joey C. Cowboy Joe d- is a low lifer for many, 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 many years <laughs> since the beginning. Since the beginning, I've gotten a lot of texts from Joey about about the show over the years. So I appreciate you, buddy. And uh, yeah, hell, let's go be bad, Cowboy Joe. Let's go win the last two and piss them all off. I'm I'm here for it. Let's go. <laughs> I'm down. <laughs> all right, buddy. Good luck, Joey. Swintez, everybody. Thanks, buddy. See ya. Cowboy Joe right there. Uh, just a good, good human right there. And uh, like I said, proud to know him. Proud to know him. I say that a lot about a lot of people, but that is the cool thing about this show and this experience that I get in life and getting the honor to talk to these people. Some are friends, some aren't. Some are people just that I'm just getting to know. But it is... Uh, it is always an honor when they stop by, carve out some time for me. Uh, you heard him there. He's with his family. He's he's meeting sponsor obligations. He had a he had an engagement this morning about an hour ago, and he told me he said, "Hey man, the kids are going to be with me. Could be a little crazy." I'm like, "Dude, let's do this thing." And uh, so I appreciate Joey very much there, and and I know, like I said, what goes in the into this for everybody. For every two trophies that get won, there are a lot of guys that are struggling. And it is, uh, it is a tough, tough world, and I just have an immense amount of respect for all the guys out there that are doing it the right way and are chasing the dream to be a professional bass fisherman, man, because it is uh, it's one I tried. It is a long, bumpy road. There's a lot of keyboard warriors that think it's easy, <laughs> but it is, uh, it's a long one. It is a long one, and, uh, and I'm grateful for the opportunity to do this show and, and be involved in it. Thanks to each and every one of you low lifers for tuning in. Going to take you out with old 64 here and I will see y'all next week see I'm sitting here tonight next to the big river in Memphis and no matter how I try I just can't leave Tennessee And all I gotta do tonight Is get myself across that muddy river 
is all 